All right, in the previous uh, video, we looked at simple examples of just a basic bond issued at face. Now let's look at pricing bonds. Corporate bonds have a stated rate of interest. However, since the market rate or the effective rate uh, can change daily, sometimes we have to sell our bonds um, at a different issue price than the actual face value. Anytime there's a difference between the stated rate and the effective rate, we must price our bonds different than the face value in order to yield the proper rate of return. Remember, regardless of the stated rate of the bond, the company must give the investor the rate of return equal to the effective or the current market rate at the time of issuance. In other words, if our bond only pays a 7% rate, but the market is 8%, they're going to take their money to a place where they're going to get the 8% return. They're not going to get a 7% return when the market yields 8%. So let's look at an example of a bond. Parker Company issues 750,000 8% five-year bonds on June 30th, 2013. The bonds pay interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. At the time of issuance, the effective rate for bonds was 10%. Now, here we've got to look closely. It looks like the exact same bond we did a moment ago. However, there's a little bit of a difference. So anytime we have this, the first thing I do, again, is answer our five questions. One, what is the face value of the bond? Well, the face value of this bond is $750,000. What's the stated rate? Well, the stated rate is always the rate indicated on the actual bond. So in this case, 8%. What's the effective or the market rate? Well, in this case, at the time of issuance, the effective rate was 10%. So now that I know the stated rate and the effective rate are different, I know for a fact that I cannot issue these at $750,000, the face value. I'm going to have to alter my pricing. Now, what's the terms? Again, this is a five-year bond, and it is semi-annual. It pays interest uh, twice per year, every six months. And then the last thing is the issue price. Well, in this case, we don't know the issue price. Since the stated rate and the effective rate are not the same, we cannot have an issue price of face value. So we're going to have to figure out the actual issue price, the amount of cash we're going to receive at the issuance of this bond. Now, how do we do this? Well, in order to calculate the, pres uh, the price of a bond, we must use the present value. So present value tells us how much uh, must be invested today to have a future amount of money. Present value depends on a few things, how long the bond will last, the interest rate of the bond, and how often payments are made. So in order to calculate the issue price of the bond, we must follow three steps. One, we have to find the present value of the face value of the bond. The second thing we have to do is find the present value of the interest payments. In other words, the interest payments are the actual cash paid periodically on the bond. And then the last thing we do is simply add the two present values together. So for our bond above, let's see how we would calculate the issue price, the amount of cash we receive on the date of issuance. All right, so again, here's an example of our bond. It says the company issues 750,000 8% five-year bonds on June 30th. The bonds pay semi-annually. Um, the effective rate of the bonds was 10%. So step one, find the present value of the face value of the bond. Now I'm going to split my screen. In order to do this, we're actually going to use the present value tables. Um, there are present value tables in most textbooks. You can also Google present value tables. Most present value tables will round to the fifth decimal place, so there will always be some rounding issue when you're dealing with our calculation of pricing. Now, one thing for this, anytime that I assign or we work a problem, we will round our final answer to the whole dollar. So keep that in mind. When we give our pricing, you'll see that I round it to the whole dollar. All right. So the first thing we do is find the present value of the face value. Now, the face value is a one-time payment. We borrow money today. At the very end, we're going to pay back that face uh, value one time. So we're going to hold whatever amount for, for five years. At the end of five years, we're going to pay back 750000 Since that is a lump sum payment, a one-time payment, we must use what we call the present value of one. All right, now there is a formula to calculate present value of one, and let me just show you the formula. Again, I always use the tables because it, it does most of the work for us, but the, the formula would be the future value, which in this case would be 750000 That's the amount we have to repay. And then you divide that by one plus the interest rate 
carry to the nth power. And what the nth power is, is the number of periods. So for this bond, we know that the future value is 750000 We know that the interest rate is 8%. Now we have to break that down. We have to find the interest and the periods. So two things we have to find. One, we have to find the n, which is the number of periods. n in this case equals the terms of the bond, or the number of years of bonds, so how long does the bond last, times the number of payments made each year. So this bond is a five-year bond, and it has two payments per year. It's semi-annual. So the periods of bo for this bond would be 10, 10 periods, 10 interest periods, okay? And then the next thing we have to find is the I, or the interest rate. Well, now the interest rate on this bond would be the effective rate. We always use the effective rate divided by the number of payments per year or per period, okay, per year. So in this case, the effective rate of the bond was 10%. Then we have two payments per year, so that means the e effective interest per period is 5%. So it's 10 periods, five years at two periods per year, and effective interest rate of 5%, or 10% per, per, per year divided by two. Anytime you're calculating the present value of the bond, you must use the effective interest rate. Okay, so when we do 750,000 and we divide that by the 1 plus the interest rate, which is 0.05, and we're going to carry that to the 10th power. Now again, we're not going to do that because the chart tells us that. We know it's 10 periods. We know it has a 5% interest rate. So if we go to our PV of 1 table here, present value of a dollar because it's one lump sum future amount, if we look up 10 periods, Okay, let me get a little bit more of this on our screen. Hopefully we can see it a little bit better. But if we look up 10 periods at 5%, notice what we get there. If you look at that, it is 0 0.61391. So 0 0.61391. So using that factor, all we need to do is say, okay, in that case, we're going to take our face value of our bond and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.61391. And when we do that, that's going to give us the present value or the amount that we would need to invest today at that rate of return in order to calculate this bond, okay? And it is 460, 432.5. And again, for my purpose, we're always going to round to the whole dollar. So 460, 433 is what we're going to use. Again, we're going to round that to the whole dollar. All right, so again, if we were to do this formula, we could easily do it if you had a proper calculator. I do not, so I'd have to take 1.05 times 1.05 10 times in order to get this because I just have a basic calculator. But you can work out that formula. You're going to get basically the same thing. Again, it may be just slightly different due to rounding because, again, we are rounding to the fifth decimal place and we are rounding this answer up. So when you look at that, that's what it ends up being, okay? So 464.33. So anytime you present, find the present value of the face value, what you do is you find the number of periods. You take the years of the bond times the number of payments per year. So 5 times 2 in this case give us 10 periods. The interest rate is the effective rate of the bond. Always use the effective rate when calculating present value of a bond. Divided by the number of payments per year. Again, this is 10% divided by 2 gave us 5% per period. You look that amount up on the PV of one table because this is a one-time lump sum value. And that gives us the amount we'd multiply our face by. So we take the 750 times that present value factor is what I call that. Gives us 464.3250 for a total of 464.33 once we round. And again, we will always round to the whole dollar in this class. Okay? All right. So now we're going to move on and look at the next step. All right, so the PV of the interest payments, or the present value of the interest payments. Again, interest is paid periodically, and anytime something is paid out over time, we call that an annuity. So since the interest is an ordinary annuity, meaning that the interest is paid at the end of the term, we use the present value of an annuity of 1. And again, um, we have that table as well. Now that formula, I, I will be honest, I do not have memorized. It's a little bit of a longer formula than the present value of a dollar, so it's a little bit different, but we still will use our table 
table here because I find that to be the easiest. I will uh, try and find that formula and post it. Again, I just do not have that one memorized due to its length. It's a little bit longer than the PV of 1 formula. All right, so the PV of interest payments. First thing we need to do is calculate the cash interest payment. That's very important. Well, remember, we said to do that, you always take the face value of the bond times the stated rate times time. And in this case, our face value of our bond is uh, $750,000. Our stated rate is 8%, and our times is 6 twelfths, or um, half, right? So we're going to take that $750,000 in essence, and we're going to multiply that by the 4% rate. Now, I know we've already done this in our last example, and it gave us $30,000. That's $30,000 that we paid out every six months. Now, we don't have to find the N because we know the N equals 10. We've already figured that up in part one, and the N and the I are the same, and the I equals our 5%. Again, the number of periods and the actual interest rate there. Okay, once you figure that up for the present value of one, you'll use that exact same amount when it comes to the present value of the interest payment. Now, once we have that, the last thing we have to do is look at our table. And again, I want to adjust my screen a little bit here so that we can see the full table. Again, we know that our periods is 10 periods, and our interest rate is going to be 5%. Remember, we always use the effective rate of interest. So 10 periods at 5%. So the present value of an annuity of 1 is going to be 7.72173. So all we need to do is take the interest payment that we found, 30000 We're going to multiply that by the PV factor of 7.72173. And when we do that, we're going to get the present value, which is 231,651.9. And again, for our class, we're going to do 231,652. We're always going to round that up. All right. And let me highlight that so that we have it highlighted. Now, step three. Step three is the coolest and the easiest step. You already have it pretty much done. All you have to do is take the 460, 433, we're going to add it to the 231, 652. And when we do that, that's actually going to give us our issue price of our bond. So 692.085. Now, notice how that is lower. So when we go up here, 692.085. When we go up here, we do 692.085. The reason being is this bond is issued at a discount. It is issued at a lower value than the face value because we have to price this bond to yield 10%. Well, we can't change the stated rate. The bond will pay 8% every six months. So the only way for us to actually give the investor a 10% rate of return over the life of this bond is to reduce the amount we charge them up front. So they're going to give us $692. At the end of the term, we're going to pay them $650, or excuse me, $750. So let me rephrase that. They're, we're, they're going to give us $692.85. That's the amount of money they're going to allow us to borrow. We are going to pay them interest on 750 at 8%, and at the end of the term, we will pay them 750000 back. So the combination of the 8% interest and the discounted price equals the same 10% return that everyone else is paying on the bond. All right. Now, I want you to pause this video, and I want you to look at this second example. Again, it's the same exact thing. It's Parker Company issues 750000 but in this case, the stated rate is 12%. 750-12% five-year bonds on June 30th. The bond pays interest semi-annually. The time of issuance, the effective rate of the bond was 10%. So again, pause this video and see if you can come up with the actual pricing of this bond based on this information. Okay, so hopefully you were able to figure this out. So let's go in and see if we can work this problem out together. Again, first we need to know is N, number of periods. So when we look at this, we actually look at this bond, and let's see here. We've got the effective rate is 10%. It's a five-year bond, and it pays semi-annually. So to find the number of periods, you take the number of years of the bonds times how often it pays. So again, our periods is 10. And then the next thing we need to know is the interest rate. So we'll go in, and the interest rate's going to be 
the, the effective rate of the bond, 10% again, and divided by the number of periods, which is 2, which is going to give us an effective rate of 5%. Granted, I know that that is the exact same as we had a moment ago, but that's okay. So um, here we go. Let's look at this. Well, what's the face value? It's going to be 750000 and we're going to multiply that again. When we look this up, we're going to use the PV of 1. Go back to our PV of 1 table. We're going to look at 10 periods at 5%, so 0 0.61391. 0 0.61391 is our factor. So when we multiply that out, again, we're going to get the exact same thing because nothing changed there. 460, and again, we're going to round to 433. Now, next thing we need to do is find our interest payment. So here, to figure out the interest payment, again, we're going to take the 750000 We're going to multiply it by the stated rate. Now, the stated rate has changed. The stated rate on this bond is 12%. So we're going to multiply it by 12% times the 6 over 12 because it's a semi-annual bond. So that's the same thing as saying 750000 times 6% or 45000 So in this case, our interest payment's a little bit different. So what we need to do? Well, we're going to take that 45000 Again, we're going to look up our present value factor. This time, though, we're going to use the present value of an annuity. So we're going to look at that. Again, we're going to look at 10 periods at our 5% because we always use the effective rate when calculating the present value. So again, that gave us 7.72173. We're going to multiply that out, and that's going to give us 347,478. Again, we're rounding to the whole dollar there. Always round to the whole dollar when we're actually doing these bonds. It makes it easier. So now the last step is to simply add these together. So here we're going to take our first answer, 460, 433. We're going to add that to the present value of the interest, uh, 347, 478. And that's going to give us a price on this bond. Let's add that together really quick, 460, 433 plus uh, 347 of 478 gives us a bond price of 807,911. Again, now notice, in this case it's a little bit different because our issue, uh, face value, excuse me, our face value is 750, however our bond price is 807, so the bond issue price is greater than face value. Well the reason being is because we're paying 12% every six months. We need to mark this bond at a price where it only gives our investors 10%, which is less than our actual stated rate of the bond. Okay, so anytime the effective rate is less than the stated rate, you will have a premium on the bond. You will be able to issue it for more than face. If the stated rate is less than the effective rate, you'll issue it at a discount, which means you have an issue price less than face. I hope this helps you understand how to calculate bond price using the present value tables.